In the name of Jesus, amen. Take a quick second, we did this at the beginning of the service, but take a quick second and look around at each other. The person to your left or right behind you, sitting in front of you, and give thanks to God that we get to be here together. It's a simple gift, something common, something that we do not deserve, but yet God gives us the chance to come here and worship together, to be with one another, because we are all in this together. There's a certain man, Richard Warmbrand, I don't know if you would remember him, he was very famous in the 1900s. Uh, he often spoke up in the Soviet countries about the persecution and the oppression of Christians. Uh, one famous time he came to the United States to speak to Congress, and he took off his shirt on live television to show all the scars and beatings he had gotten. Well, one time, he was put into solitary confinement for three years. Didn't get to see a single soul for three whole years. Can you imagine that? Not seeing another Christian, not seeing your family. His family thought he was dead. In fact, they had some prisoners come that were really Soviet soldiers and tell him that they had attended his funeral, so don't expect him to come home. And so he sat in a cell with guards that would wear uh, like footies that would make them silent as they went past, utterly alone. He craved for another person to be around, especially another person to, uh, of the faith to be next to. In fact, he would, uh, to keep himself sane, he would sleep during the day, and at night he would get up and compose a sermon to himself, and then preach it to himself each night. The only communication he did have with other people was that he would use Morse code on the pipes, and hopefully he would hear something back. So what a joy for us that we get to be together. It's a gift I think we sometimes forget. We get so used to being together that we sometimes forget how precious it is. Because when he got out of prison and finally found a family that thought he was dead, they rejoiced together that they could be together. And here you are today, brothers and sisters in Christ, that we share a bond with our Lord, that God has put you here, not on accident today, you didn't just happen a chance to walk in, but God has brought you here to be together and to connect with Him, our bond with our Lord and Savior, who by His blood binds us together into our faith. So with that, I have the joy not to just address you as some random crowd of people, but I have the joy to address you as this, brothers and sisters in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace are yours, in God our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. You are not alone. None of you are. In fact, as brothers and sisters in Christ, we are in this together. Do you realize that? We are in this together. And that's the, all, that's the message that our text in Hebrews wants to make clear to us. He had spent chapters 11 talking about all this great cloud of witnesses that are with us. The old the heroes of the faith, Abraham, you know, Isaac, Moses, all these faithful people. And then he encourages the believers today in the text. He speaks to a church that is under the threat of Roman persecution at this time. They're the same persecution that took the lives of Peter and Paul. And there may be some in the church who are wondering, what are we going to do? They're out there hunting for us. Do we even bother to meet together? Do we even bother to gather with one another for fear of being caught? Because it's a lot easier to be caught with other people than it is to be caught on your own. When the culture and the church that they live in is such hostile to each other. What are we to do? To hide? To not to not gather together? Do we ever feel that same? Too sure we do not feel the threat of death, of persecution, but we feel our own pressures, don't we? A culture that is so adamant about being busy every second of your day, planned out, thought of, and executed, that sometimes it might just be easier to be like, church, maybe not this week, you got other stuff to do, Bible class. I just don't have time for that. I've got so much stuff to do. Our culture, in such subtle ways, attacks us and tries to put our faith to flight so that we are not together. Ultimately, that is the threat.
traps of Satan and of our sin that drive, wants to drive us away from each other. Maybe as a guest and visitor, you feel that sin in your life, or if you're just like me, you see your sin, you're confronted with it, and you're like, I don't deserve, people shouldn't see me out in daylight. Maybe you're watching another video, and you're wondering, I just, I'm too afraid to show my face in public. Well, as a church, we get to gather together as Jesus has forgiven us, binds us together. Hebrews says, what do we do together? We don't hide, we don't try to run away, but we show brotherly love to each other. That's how we combat this sin that we have with each other, the forgiveness that, we, that Christ has won for us. We get to show brotherly love to one another. Even in our sin, our brokenness, we get to restore one another. Done what Christ has done for us. It's the same brotherly love that you showed to me, my family upon moving here. Mostly strangers coming in, but yet you've helped us move in, you've taken care of our family, even provided for us from your own means. There's no less something to be thankful for God that we can do to share brotherly love with one another. And Hebrews, he goes on to talk about showing kindness to strangers, showing hospitality. Can you imagine? In a culture where those who hate you, those who mock you, are strangers. And Hebrews, is, the book of Hebrews is telling you, show hospitality to them. Uh, last week, Bonnie, those were the people from Fran Paris, France, who came by, they greeted her as said, bonjour, and she put, greeted them, had them come to the church, showed them around, were talking. It's good hospitality. And who knows? They have been angels for all we know. You never know. I hadn't seen them again. I hadn't seen them before that either. So, sharing brotherly love with strangers. That's how Hebrews, as he's talking about it, all this that he says in the text fits under brotherly love. Because we are connected with each other closer than the families in this community and church are. We share a bond that is closer than I share with my own sons because it is the blood of Christ, not just my natural bloodline, that binds us together. Christians are closer than everyone else. And we share that connection with all those, but especially here today amongst each other. It's the same brotherly love that we share each day, showing the hospitality to strangers who are connected to each other, that even when one of us is in jail, we should go visit them, because as if we are all in jail together for suffering for the faith. When one of us is happy, we all rejoice because we are connected to them in Christ. When one of us suffers, we all suffer the same fate together. Because we are not alone. Christ has made us, put us together. It's really easy to lose sight of these gifts, isn't it? Something is so simple, so, something is so common that we ultimately forget that it still comes from God. Who We don't deserve it, we don't deserve to be with each other, but yet God still puts us together with each other in this community. Ultimately, Jesus is the one who shows us brotherly love, isn't he? In fact, everything else, showing brotherly love in itself is great, but that's not why we have gathered together. It's because Jesus has put you, his church, together. He is the one who wanted to be our brother. God himself becomes a human being because he wants to be connected to you and he also wants to put us back with each other. That's why, as Christians, we can confidently say with our text today, the Lord is my helper. I shall not fear. What can man do to me? Because ultimately, this all hangs on Jesus. It doesn't hang on me. It doesn't hang on pastor. It hangs on Jesus. Because he's the one who's in control of his church. He's the one that guides his church and puts us together. So my fellow brothers and sisters, you need not fear being put into jail. You need not fear being at risk for sharing and being brotherly loves to each other or showing the hospitality to strangers. Because even though they may hate, we risk that. We risk being hated. We risk being looked like fools. But as Christians, we risk so much more 
by not sharing that love of Christ who comes down and makes us brothers together. You are not alone. You are not forsaken because Jesus has claimed you. In fact, the only one who is rightly forsaken, strangely enough, is Jesus himself as he takes on our sin and our brokenness so that we can be put together. So do not fear the jail, looking like fools, even death, because you are with Jesus, all of us together. And Jesus has conquered all things, all of your fears, all of your worries. So do not worry about being alone. You are here together with Christ. Together, we are the light of Christ that shines in a very dark world, even as nice of a town as St. Genevieve. We are put together with Christ to show brotherly love, because Jesus is making a new creation, and it starts with you, his church. You are a new creation in Christ. You remember this when we come to worship together. When we come to Bible study together, when we find times to eat with one another, that's important as Christians to find times to eat with one another, to put up with one another, because there are no solitary Christians, nor does God want there to be. Thanks be to God that we are all together with Christ, and no foe or force can undo what God has put together. Thanks be to God that as together as a body we consume his very body and blood of our Savior together for the forgiveness of our sins. Thanks be to God that in our baptisms we are placed together in one body with Jesus as our head. Amen. Now may the God of all peace, the Father who created you, the Son who redeemed you, and the Holy Spirit who has placed us together today. May He keep us together until the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.